spiritual warfare. And in order to win our battle, we have to raise our hands of prayer toward heaven. Okay, and this morning, uh, I'm going to speak about who are our enemies and what they do in our spiritual battle. And furthermore, I am going to speak about who we are, okay, and what is the strongest weapon that we have in Jesus Christ to win the battle. And it is really important to know who our enemies are. And also, it is really important to know who we are in Christ. Okay, and if you know uh, this verse, uh, it is Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. It says, Our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Who they are, do you think? Who are the rulers? Who are the authorities? Who are the powers of this dark world? And who are the spiritual forces of evil? Who they are? And in order to explain about who they are and what they do, we have to understand a little bit more about who Goliath is in the text. Okay, this is the profile of Goliath. You know him very well. You, know. you heard about him when he was so young. So we know him very well. He was from a small town called Gath. And do you know how tall he was? His height was 9 feet 9 inches. Which means he was about 3 meters high. Okay? And he was always putting on a full armor. And its weight altogether was well over 150 pounds, which is about 70 kilograms. Can you wear something which is 150 pounds on you? Can you carry them? No, we cannot. But he was just wearing those kind of heavy uh, armor on him. So he was a powerful giant. And the Bible says that he was a champion of the Philistines. And in order to understand his spiritual background, we have to understand his genetic background. So, where did he come from? Goliath was a descendant of the Anakites. Have you heard about the Anakites? Yes, you know him. You know them very well. Who were the Anakites? The Anakites were giants who lived in Canaan when Joshua conquered the land. And you know that you know, Moses sent 12 spies to, to the Promised Land to do a kind of research about the people and the land. And they came back and they reported about what they had seen. And this is the part of the, part of the report that they gave to Moses and the Israelites. The people who live there are powerful. And we even saw descendants of Anak there. So, they saw powerful giants who are called the Anakites there. And where did the Anakites come from, do you think? Where did they come from? According to their report, they said this, they, the Anakites, are the descendants of the Nephilim. Have you heard about the Nephilim? No. Who were the Nephilim? And if we turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 6, we can find who they are. Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, it says, The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. So according to you know, this verse, the Nephilims were produced through sexual intercourses 
between the fallen angels and the daughters of men. And how uh, could it be possible? I do not know. But the Bible says clearly that they were produced by the sexual intercourse between uh, the fallen angels and uh, women of the time. The word Nephilim was derived from the Hebrew word Nafal, which means to fall. Therefore, Nephilim means the fallen ones. Okay? Nephilim, the Nephilim means the fallen ones. This is why God sent the flood. You know, God sent the flood to remove all those evil ones on earth. Because they were evil, according to Genesis chapter 6, they were evil, and everything that they did was evil, always. Their thinking was evil, their deeds were evil. So God punished them through the flood. So those people, the evil ones, the giants, were removed from the earth by the flood. But unfortunately, the same evil thing was practiced again after the flood. And it produced giants again. And they were called the Anakites. Before the flood, they were called the Nephilim. After the flood, they were called the Anakites. And the Anakites were also called <coughs> Rephaim. Have you heard about the term Rephaim? They were called as Rephaim, the Rephaim. And the word Rephaim means the dead ones. They were spiritually dead. And in a sense, they were born to fight against God and fight against the children of God. And what was the purpose of Satan in doing this? And this morning I'm going to reveal something about what Satan is doing, you know, in this world. And what was the purpose of Satan in doing this in terms of producing these powerful evil giants, do you think? Satan tried to conquer the world, the whole world, with these powerful evil giants. That was his purpose. Satan used these fallen ones and the dead ones to destroy the work of God and to destroy the children of God on earth. Therefore, if you read the Bible, these giants were always in opposition with Israel. Always. They came against Israel always in the Bible. And Goliath is a kind of representative example of what these giants did against the children of God. And this was the reason, you know, this was the reason that God commanded the Israelites to go up to the Canaan and conquer the land and to kill everybody in the land because from the eyes of the Lord, everyone was evil. And some people say that, you know, God in the Old Testament is quite cruel and he likes to kill people. That is wrong. That is wrong. That is very much human-centered approach without understanding what is going on in reality, in the spiritual realm. So we have to have the perspective of God in terms of reading the scriptures and in terms of understanding what is going on in the heavenly realms. Without proper understanding of God's plan and His, you know, will, our judgment will be skewed and distorted. And we can understand completely about what God is doing. So as I prayed, you know, last week, we have to pray to the Lord, unveil my eyes to see what you are doing in the spiritual realm and also what our enemies are doing in the spiritual realm. What is going on in this world? We cannot see with our physical eyes about what is going on in the spiritual realm. There is a kind of huge spiritual warfare here in our area, in the whole universe, between the kingdom of God and between the kingdom of Satan. Fighting is going on through prayer. You know? Do you know about all these things? So we have to understand what is going on, what God is doing for us, and what our enemies are doing against us. 
So what did Goliath do? First of all, he came out and he mocked and ridiculed the children of God. This is happening nowadays as well. Our enemies, they ridicule Christians and churches and they mock. Do you know why? We are powerless. Do you know why? We do not follow the God's word. So they mock and they ridicule us. And he, he defied the armies of the living God. And also he challenged the armies of Israel day and night for 40 days. Twice a day, for 40 days, he came out and he shouted, Choose one among you and let him come down and fight against me. Ha, ha, ha. But no one, no one came out. King Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. In their eyes, their enemy was too big, too powerful, and his voice was so loud, so that they were frightened, they were terrified. You know, Goliath is a kind of symbolic meaning telling us how our enemies are strong and powerful. But this is really sad. Whenever the children of God faced these kind of giants, enemies, they suffered from their sense of inferiority and defeatism all the time. If you read the Bible, when they faced, although they were children of God, when they faced these kind of giants, huge enemies, they were terrified. They couldn't fight. You know, when the 12 spies came back to Moses, you know, 10 of them reported negatively, and this is what they said. We saw the Nephilim there, and we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. We cannot attack them because they are stronger than we are. This was what they said from their mouth. They are stronger than we are. We are like grasshoppers. And this particular phenomenon is also observed in our days. Christian, Christians and churches are in this grasshopper syndrome. I call it grasshopper syndrome. Our enemies ridicule us, they mock us, they challenge us to come out and fight, but we will not come out and fight against our enemies. And we have to choose now, either we are continually terrified and dismayed, or we bravely rise up and fight against them. Which one is our choice? I want SCC to be like David. Not like the, the, the rest of the Israelites, but I want us to be like David. David was the only one who came forward and he confronted the enemy, huge enemy, and he fought against the giant. You know, he was a teenager, like Doyle and Matthew, and he had never had any kind of military training at all. But he just he came forward. Do you know why? Because he couldn't bear the mockery of Goliath or the armies of God. And David couldn't bear when God of Israel was mocked and ridiculed by the uncircumcised evil man. So what David did? What David did? Simply he came forward. And he ran to Goliath. And as you know, he slung a stone and it struck Goliath on his forehead. The Bible says the stone sank into his forehead. Praise God. And this is a important question to you this morning. Why? Why? Goliath's forehead was damaged, do you think? Why? That's right, yes. That was the only part of his body that was exposed. He was covering everything. But there is something deeper thing that we can find 
from the question. I think that is exactly right. Why his head was damaged? Was it by chance? No, I don't think so. There is a kind of strong message in it, and I was thrilled about it when I realized it. And in order to answer to the question, we have to understand who David was, who David was at the time. Who David was? I know that you may say David was the youngest son of Jesse, that's right. He was a shepherd, that's right. And he was a brave young man, that's right. He was musically talented, that's right. But those are not the answers that I'm looking for. Who David was? Before he came to the battlefield, what happened? Can you remember? Let's look at Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 16. This is an important clue about who we are in Christ. 16 verse 13. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers and from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. Who was David? David was an anointed one. Anointed one. He was an anointed one. He was the future king of Israel. Why? Why, you know, knowing this one is so important, he was, um, he was an anointed one and he was a future king of Israel. Why knowing this is really important in terms of understanding why David Goliath's forehead was damaged. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. <coughs> Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. 15. I'm going to read it. And I will put enmity between you. Now God is speaking to the serpent. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He, the anointed one, and the future king of Israel, he, Jesus Christ, will crush your head. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. The anointed one's ministry is to crush enemy's head. Praise God. Praise God. We know that this verse indicates Jesus Christ. We know that. But we also know that David was a type of Christ in the Old Testament. He was the anointed one. He was the future king of Israel. So he crushed the head of Goliath. Praise God. Jesus crushed Satan's head on the cross because he was the anointed one and he was the future king of Israel. He's the king of Israel. We sang this morning, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. So he crushed the enemy's head. David crushed the enemy's head because he was the anointed one and he was the future king of Israel. From this story, we have to find another important message. You and I are anointed ones. We are anointed ones. It's not my word. It is the word of God. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22, it says like this. I'm going to read it for you. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. It is God who makes us standing firm in Christ. And God anointed you. God anointed you. And God set his seal of ownership on you. And he put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. We are anointed one by the Lord. Which means we have got power we have the right to crush heads of enemies. 
Same as David. This is our identity. Don't forget this. When we are in our spiritual warfare, don't forget this. We are also anointed ones. As David, you are anointed ones. God anointed you with his oil, with his spirit, and you are his. I am his. He said, I said, this is his word, I said, my seal of ownership on you. You are mine. I purchased you through my son's blood. You are mine. We are his. We are anointed the world. We have the power in Christ. This is our identity. And David had the same identity. I am an anointed one. This is why he scorned David the Goliath in this way. You are uncircumcised evil man. But I am a holy man. I am an anointed man by the Lord. Why? Why the King Saul? Why King Saul and other Israelites were so coward that they did not come out? Although King Saul was anointed by the Lord as the king, he didn't have this strong identity in Christ, in God. He didn't have this identity that he was an anointed one. SCC is an anointed one. God anointed this church. We have got power. God allows us to crush the hands of our enemies. Don't be coward. I know we are strong. I know we are powerful. But don't be dismayed. Don't be terrified. When you face, when we fight, face as a church, a huge giant in our ministry, in our church, in our society, we shouldn't be dismayed because we are holy, anointed ones of God. Our God is alive. He is powerfully working in our lives. He is leading us and guiding us and He is protecting us. He is working for His holy, anointed ones for us. We shouldn't be dismayed. Don't look at our circumstances or environment, but we have to look at our God who anointed us. He will lead us. He will give us a victory. Why Goliath's hand was damaged? Because David's ministry was to crush the head of enemies because he was anointed one. What is our ministry? Our ministry is to crush, fight against our enemies and crush their hands with the power and authority from the Lord. That is the important thing. You know, the battle between David and Goliath does not imply as a personal battle between the two people. And, and also, it does not imply that the battle was between the two countries, between the Israelites and the Philistines. It implies that there is a spiritual battle between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. As holy, anointed ones, we are on God's side, and God will give us victory. You know, we will damage the head of Satan, and we will step on his head. How? How can it be possible? You know, another thing that we can do as as you know, God's anointed ones. We can step on our enemies. You know, if you read um, verse 51, it says, David ran when Goliath fell to the ground. He ran to him and he stood over him. Hallelujah. He stood over him. This is another thing that we will do with Christ. He stepped over his enemy. And if you turn your Bible to Romans chapter 16, let's read it together. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. We have different versions, but I want us to read it together in different versions. 16 verse 20. Let's read it together now. The God of peace will soon cross Satan under your feet. Hallelujah. The God of peace 
you know, the, peace, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet, which means we will step on him, on his head, one day, because the God of peace will do it anyway for us. One day. And we will be able to step on our enemies. This is our power and our privilege as God's holy anointed ones. So, we have to remember that we are holy ones of Israel, holy ones of God. We are holy anointed ones. Another one that we have to remember is this. When we come to fight against our enemies, we have to come to fight against our enemies in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Not in our own power, but in the name of the Lord. You know, the Satan and his followers mock the name of the Lord nowadays. You know, Goliath, he mocked and ridiculed the name of the Lord. But the name of the Lord, this morning we bless the name of the Lord. This is what we do, but our enemies, they mock and ridicule the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord, which is ridiculed by our enemies, is the strongest weapon that we can have. Do you agree with me? This is the strongest power, strongest weapon that we can use in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. We have to stand, we have to fight in the name of the Lord. This is what David did. You, Goliath, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Mighty, the God of the armies of Israel. I don't think his weapon was a sling or stone. His weapon was the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord has got power. Pray in the name of the Lord. Fight, stand in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord will give us power and victory in the end. All the faith, faithful people in the Bible, they fought against evil powers in their lives in the name of the Lord. The, you know, the, the fathers in the ancient world, they remem remember the God's name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, you know, the power of the Lord, the powerful God, Almighty God, El Shaddai. Whenever they face difficulties and they face enemies, they call upon the name of the Lord, Elohim and El Shaddai, God is powerful, Almighty God in my life. When nephew, you know, Abraham's nephew, Lord, was arrested and taken captive, Abraham chased the enemies. How many people? Only 319, 80? Small number of people, but he could win the battle. How? He trusted in the name of the Lord, El Shaddai, El Shaddai. The El Shaddai, Elohim, the powerful God is with us when we call upon his name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and he, they are saved, they are safe. The name of the Lord has got power. The Bible keeps saying that the one who is in you is stronger than the one who is in the world. The name of the Lord has got power. The one who is living within us is much, much powerful, much more powerful than the one who is in the world. So, Last week, I said that we have to overcome our survival mechanism. We are not here to survive, but to be thriving in God's work. That is what I said. This week, I want to say to you and to me, we have to overcome this grasshopper syndrome. We are not grasshoppers. We are not grasshoppers. Actually, in God's name, in God's power, we are stronger than the giants. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? We are stronger than giants. Whoever they are, how tall they are, it doesn't matter. We are stronger in God's name, in God's power, because we are holy, anointed one. I do not know how tall David was. Maybe about 150. So, Goliath was double tall, twice taller than David. But he didn't care about it because he was the holy, anointed one of God. Let's overcome this. I, I know that we don't have it, but just in case, let's overcome this 
cross over syndrome in our lives. In our Christianity, in this country, we have to overcome it. We are stronger. We shouldn't say that you know, they are stronger than we, uh, we are. We have to say we are stronger than our enemies because of God and His name in us. So SCC is stronger than our enemies in God and in His name. Praise God. Let's stand together in His name. Don't be dismayed, but we have to be united to fight against our enemies. And God will give us victory. Hallelujah. In the end, in the end, we will triumph over our enemies and their heads will be crushed and one day we will step on them. I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to step on them. Hallelujah. Praise God. They are so disturbing us, you know. We are in the spirit warfare. Their attack is quite strong, but don't worry, don't worry. We are gradually, gradually taking our ground back. This is what I feel in this place, in Soli Hall, in Sholi here in this place. We have lost some part of our ground, but now we are taking it back. We are praying together, we are standing together, we have this identity, we are the holy ones anointed by God. Hallelujah. Let's pray together.